Welcome back, I'm Shane and this is Relative Time. One thing I really appreciate about Zelos is their variety of styles and sizes. They seem to realize they have a fairly diverse fan base, and it seems they try to keep their collection rather balanced. For instance, when they released the 3000 meter Abyss 3, which is a little larger and a little crazy, they immediately followed that up with the more contemporary 40mm Mako 3s. So today we're going to take a look at the new 43mm Horizons, and it's another great example of that. Last year, Zealous released the 39mm Horizons, and people seem to love the design as well as the different dial textures. But Zealous also seemed to realize that not everyone wants a sub 40mm diver, so they followed that up by making a larger version, which is what we're going to look at today. And in full disclosure, this watch was provided by Zelos, and they're not going to ask for it back, hence that promotional tag. Now, these 43mm Horizons are going to be a rather limited release. I think there's only four colorways, and there's only going to be 100 or 120 watches per colorway, with this one being the teal version. Now, they're not just a larger version either. They've gone back to the straight timing bezel from a 12 hour, and they've also downgraded the movement to a Seiko NH35A from a Miyota 9015. But that's also caused a drop in price as well, and I think launch pricing is going to be around 349. Size wise, these are 43 millimeters wide without, and about 46 and a half with the crown. While well, you're also looking at a lug to lug of almost 49, and a total thickness of 14.5. So, as the name suggests, this is a little on the larger side. But it's nothing crazy, and still fairly manageable with that lug to lug. If anything, I think people are going to have a bigger issue with the thickness rather than the width. Although, Zealous did a great job with the case design, and it really doesn't seem that tall on the wrist. As well as you have a nicely embossed case back, textured dial, and a modestly domed sapphire crystal. So, that thickness can be justified. Now, rounding out the specs, you also have a 22mm lug width, 200m of water resistance, a signed screw down crown, and a pretty solid weight at 185 grams on its bracelet. Solid is also a pretty good way to describe how this feels on the wrist. It's pretty comfortable and pretty well made, as well as it's nicely balanced on its bracelet. With my 7 inch wrist, there is a slight overhang, and part of that is due to the first link on the bracelet, but otherwise it's pretty comfortable to wear throughout the day. Now, I never got to see the 39mm Horizons, but I did get to review the second GMT version, and I can say that the case styling is the same, just a little bit larger, where the design is primarily defined by a lack of crown guards and these narrow lugs coming out. It's not until you get to the side of the case, where you can see the sleeker, curvier design. Where it has a narrow, linear brush side, which is then sandwiched in between two polished beveled edges, which then join together as they reach each lug. It really is a great case design, and I think those curvier sides really help hide how thick the horizon really is. On the rear, we have an entirely brushed finish, as well as a closed case back. And that case back does stick out just a tad, and probably because of the Seiko NH35A movement. The case back also has a rather nice embossed world map on it. Now that map makes more sense on the GMT, as well as maybe the 12 hour version. But it looks great enough that you don't really give it second thought. Flipping the watch over, you can see that the top of the case has a circular brushing, which really helps you focus in on the dial and the bezel. I believe that the other colorways are going to have a ceramic bezel, but the steel version has a sapphire insert, which I think is doing a great job emulating the dial and the texture on it with this very cool black and blue color scheme. Now, the bezel itself isn't very tall or wide, and while it has this cool texture on the side, that texture isn't very deep, so it is a little bit harder to use. However, the action itself is great. It's 120 click, unidirectional, and has a nice tactile sound and feel as you turn it, as well as just a very minimal amount of backplay. Now, when it comes to the dial, this thing is drop dead gorgeous. The teal version has a light blue gradient dial that turns to black as you get to the outer edge, which is then combined with a highly textured sunburst effect. And as a side note, over the last few weeks while I've been wearing it, I've had a number of complete strangers notice it and say something about it. So the teal version isn't subtle, but in a good way. Now, a lot of people are going to look at this dial and automatically think cocktail time. And while I'm sure there is some inspiration there, it's not exactly cocktail time. 
It's more similar to what Zelos did with the Nova and what Phoebus did with the Voyager. Comparing this to a cocktail time is like talking art versus architecture. There is a beauty and purpose to each. With the horizons, the ridges are sharper and deeper, while the cocktail time is less defined with a smoother transition as you go across the dial. However, one consequence of those deeper ridges is that the Horizons isn't a watch that looks great in macro. At an arm's length, this watch is striking and well-defined. But just like with a digital picture, the more you zoom in, the more grainy it looks. So just bear that in mind here. The overall dial design retains the same cues from the other Horizons, which is a combination of applied upside-down triangles and wedges which has a metallic frame that is then filled to the brim with copious amounts of loom paint, kind of to the point that they always have a faint green glow to them. While the dial design looks great in the smaller versions, jumbo sizing it like they've done here kind of gives it a different feel. Whereas before it had this very subtle crosshair effect, now it's more monstrous and in a good way. Combined with that textured dial, those upside down triangles really look like teeth as it's about to swallow something down its throat. One thing I like is how the indices sit at the very edge of the dial, with the painted chapter ring taking up the space in between, as it seems to give the watch an even larger presence, while freeing up space for the textured teal in the middle, as does the extra small font at the bottom and the modest sized applied logo at the top. The logo itself is fine, but I've never seen an applied logo look right on this type of dial. With those sharper ridges, they never look like they quite belong. The hands are lance shaped, and just like the indices, they have a silver frame and then also filled with a ton of loom. Overall, they look great and they have a good length, but maybe they're a little narrow for this extra wide dial. Whereas the second hand is absolutely perfect here. The white tip of the arrow seems to end right at the edge of the indices, which is also where the gradient starts to turn darker, which then leaves that red tip to venture out alone over that darkness to the very edge of the dial. It's just a really cool touch as is the color match date wheel, which is nicely framed at the six. This is a good example of how to implement a date and have it blend in better with the overall design. Now, if you're a loom nut, Zealous has you covered with this one, which isn't really surprising. Zealous always does a great job when it comes to loom, and the Horizons has a very unique loom profile. The larger indices look great. They're very bold and very easy to make out which is then joined by the detailed bezel and the thin chapter ring markers, which are done in a blue loom. Although as good as those little blue markers look, they don't last that long. Now with this comparison test, there are two things to take note of. The first is that the Horizons easily outpaces the Seiko Turtle, while the other is that for the most part, it keeps up with the Phoebus Great Wall. The Phoebus Great Wall is the best watch I have when it comes to loom, and the Horizons here mostly keeps up with it. The dial itself seems to keep up a little bit longer, but the hands fade out just a little bit before the great walls, which is still an accomplishment. So fantastic loom here, and it should not disappoint. Now, if there's one thing that Zealous has occasionally stumbled on over the years, that's with their bracelets. The quality has always been great, but every once in a while they try to tweak something to improve it, and sometimes those tweaks wind up backfiring such as the really comfortable but really short clasp that was on the Swordfish V2. However, all that fine tuning has paid off, and that's exactly what we have here. This bracelet is spot on and fantastic. It's a single link style bracelet that's mostly brushed, except for a polished chamfered edge running down the side of each link. It has solid end links, solid screwed end links, as well as a top notch milled clasp. The bracelet starts off at 22 and then tapers down to 18 for added comfort. Plus, there are two things here you don't normally get with a bracelet at this price, such as a ratcheting diver's extension clasp and quick release end links. So really a fantastic bracelet, and one reason I think this watch is easily worth the cost. Although as much as I like this bracelet, I actually found the Horizons to be a bit more comfortable on a nice strap. And this particular combo here is the one I like the best. It's not exactly dive ready, but it looks great and it's very comfortable. So in terms of value, you're looking at a launch day price of $349, and typically prices will go up a month later. Overall, when you consider everything you're getting, I think the price is rather fair. You have pretty much everything you want with a gorgeous, unique design. 
However, for a watch with a Seiko NH35A movement, I think this is a tad on the high side. And you don't even need to look outside Zealous to realize that. Launch price for the version 2 Swordfish was 300 bucks, and even more recently the 40mm Swordfish was 250. So this is definitely a little on the high side, but you are getting some upgrades here. Mainly that domed sapphire, the ratcheting bracelet, and I'm sure this dial isn't cheap to make. So while it is a little bit high, I think there is justification here. Now there is one other thing I want to talk about, and it's not so much about the watch as much as the brand identity within Zealous's collection. Zealous has released a lot of watches recently, and a year ago if you said something about a Swordfish, a Mako, Horizons, it was really clear about what watch you were talking about. Every year there'd be a new version of each, but the identity of the watch stayed consistent. In the Zealous ecosphere, the Swordfish has always been their 42mm entry-level diver with a Seiko NH35A movement, whereas the Mako has been their 40mm mid-level with a Miyota 9015, and the Horizons has always been their GMT with a Salita movement. Nowadays, there are a few models that have a few different sizes as well as types, and this can get a little bit confusing, especially with the Horizons that I think is the most confusing out of all of them, as there are now four completely different types of watches. There's the GMT, the 39mm Diver, the 39mm Field, and now the 43mm Diver. And they all have different specs as well as prices. So if someone starts talking about the Horizons, it's not quite clear which watch they're talking about. So as much as I love variety and choice, there does come a point where it starts to get messy. Not only do you start to lose the specific identity of each model, but it can start to cause confusion in new customers who aren't familiar with their history and don't really want to read a primer on it. With some watches, it's really hard to gauge whether or not these images truly convey the sense the watch gives in person, and I think the Horizons is one of those. It really is fantastic, as well as a great example of why people love Zelos. It's a great balance of value with unique design and style, something that's a bit subtle in its complexity, yet bold in its presentation all wrapped up in a very capable dive watch. So if you like something a little bigger, the Horizons 43mm is definitely worth checking out. Or if you're curious about what they're coming out with next, your best bet is to sign up for their newsletter, because right now I have no idea. But in the meantime, let me know what you think of the 43mm Horizons, or if there's another upcoming Zealous you're more interested in. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me. Till next time.